Welcome back. This is Kevin McCain with Kevin McCain Studios and I do horror classes. For those that have taken my classes, this here is going to be the the seventh session. We're going to do a little, another little painting, a, a small little study, working with color. I'm going to be using basically uh, these three brushes here. Uh, what I've got is I've got a number six. This is a this is a flat, but it's an extra long flat. So if we look at these, these are both number sixes. They're both flats. They're by two different companies, but this is just a little longer flat than this one. So we've got two number six flats, and then this is a number 10 synthetic, is what this is. So it's a soft hair brush. These are two are bristle. Well, this is a synthetic bristle, but again, these are supposed to be, these are coarser, and this is a little softer. Okay, so that would be my larger brush. Again, it's a number 10. I don't even know who the, whose brush this is. Oh, I guess it's a Robert Simmons. Okay. Uh, titanium. So we're just going to put these over here. I've also got my palette knife here for if I if I need it. Usually with a palette knife, I only I only mix up with the palette knife these initial mixtures. Uh, everything else will be mixed with the brush. We've got paper towels here, uh, though not preferable. I have taped down a piece of of just of canvas. It's prepped canvas. It's gessoed all that good stuff. What's not what I normally wouldn't do is I wouldn't use this blue tape. Usually you want a neutral tape so that the blue doesn't affect your color choices. Uh, it may not seem like that'd be a big deal, but the more you paint, the more you realize you're really affected by what's around it. Um, I couldn't find my more neutral stuff, so we're going to have to deal with it. So I'm going to have to keep in, in mind that that blue there is, is there and not to let it affect my color choices. Um, in terms, I've got some minerals. So over here to the side, you can't see, but I've got I've got a thing of mineral spirits. So I've got my brushes and all that good stuff. Uh, for my colors, I've got titanium white. I've got a cad ye yellow. Uh, this is cad yellow medium. Uh, I mixed my cad yellow medium and my my naphthol red, or Grumbacher red, or Windsor red, or naphthol red. But whatever, whatever it's, it goes by about forty different names. Uh, but I mix these two together to get an orange because I'm going to be doing a tangerine, so I want orange because I don't want to have to mix it every time. So I, I, it's called a convenience color. So I'm saving myself some time. I have ultramarine blue here. Uh, for those in the class, again, that you know, if it's Grumbacher, I think they're calling it brilliant blue these days. Uh, but you could either use French ultramarine or ultramarine blue. They're just slightly different. French is just a little deeper. It's a little more violet. It's the only change. Is the only difference. Uh, this right here is is ivory black. Uh, for those that don't want to use black, if you're not in the class, you could use Payne's gray. You can mix burnt umber and thalo blue, whichever. But this is again, this is ivory black, and these are just two grays that I've mixed with the ivory black. Um, this is burnt umber, and then we have two grays that I've mixed with the burnt umber. And then I just realized usually I, 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 sh I have three, I should have three. And so we're going to just take a little bit of this and make a light gray. That's the good old tinting strength. I didn't, I didn't mix like I should have. And because of that, I'm going to have to use much more white. What I should have done is started with my white and then added just little bits. And I just slapped a big old hunk in there and said, oh, I hope it's right. And that's, you know, let that be a lesson to you that even if you're, you know, there's certain times if you're not thinking, uh, it's it's never in your, it's, things don't usually work as much in your favor. Now, it's not a big deal. It's like, oh, well, it wasn't so out of bounds that I, I knew I'd have to scrap the entire mixture. But the moment I, I did it, I just realized, oh, I made a mistake. That's not what I should have been doing. That's okay. We can always, it's paint. We can always go ahead and, and uh, correct it. I'm going to do the same thing for my brown. We're going to take a little bit of this, a little bit of this. Uh, and mix a light. And again, this is just titanium white and burnt umber, which I'll just, from now on, I'm just going to call my brown. Now, for those of you that are going to get in the painting class, I'm going to move at a little quicker clip than I did last time. I'm not going to stay, I'm not going to do it as slowly. So we have a couple more objects instead of just one object, and we really need to, you know, even so, this is, this, this demo is probably going to take at least an hour, maybe even an hour and a half. Um, but the more stuff you have in your, the more stuff that you have when you're painting, obviously the longer it's going to take. So, um, I didn't tell you what this is. This is just, this is just a mud. So when I cleaned my palette, I scraped it all together. And this was from last week when we did the apple. So there was a lot of red 
And so what I have here is I have a neutral, warm red. It's a red with a low, it's sort of a medium to mo medium low chroma. Uh, and uh, it, the, the hue is red. The value is about a step six on the value scale uh, as far as that goes. Maybe it's between a step six and a step five, but it's somewhere in that area. Uh, and so this will be, again, we can use this to help us neutralize colors. So in terms of, I'm going to have on the video, you should, there'll be a little clip of what I'm painting from. We're painting basically a, uh, a clay apple. Well, it's just, it's, anyways, it's, yeah, it's a clay, it's supposed to represent an apple uh, that's made from white clay. And then we've got um, a little... A uh, little tangerine, though it's really small. Like I can't believe how small these tangerines are. Um, and since we're in the middle of the pandemic, I'm not gonna go out and get some more <laughs> in case, you know, just in case, or we have to deal with it. Um, and then we've got it sitting on top of the wood cube. So what we're going to be dealing with is we're going to be dealing with a high chroma object like the like the tangerine. We're going to be dealing with a medium to medium low chroma object like the wood cube. And then we're going to be dealing with something that's almost neutral, completely of the, the low, very low chroma, almost medium gray. Um, the light source that I'm using is yellow orange, which means we're going to have blues, blue to blue violet casting in the shadows. Um, we got yellow orange. Yeah, it should be blue violet. Um, so, and that's the compliment. The shadows always try to, you know, we'll try to bring a little bit of the complementary color in there. Um, now it's it's also in uh, in context. When I say blue violet, it's very soft. So it'd be like adding blue violet to orange, which is going to give us a brown. So understand when I say stuff like that with light, it it just softly um, influences what we're doing. Now I've got this. I've got some areas here where it seems like we've got drier and wetter areas. I don't know what that's about. Makes me wonder about how good the, the, the canvas is. This isn't anything great. This is just out of a, this is real canvas, but it, it's out of a, a little sketchbook uh, of, of, of Fred, it's a Frederick's canvas sketchbook. So it is true canvas, but it's, it's, it's not going to be near as nice as, you know, their canvas panels or stuff like that. I'm going to go ahead and we're go I, I wiped off the excess and now we're just going to get started. I'm going to draw this in with a neutral uh, gray and we're, we're going to start to place our image. We're also going to do a lot of, I'm going to do some creative, um, use my creative prerogative. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is we're going to simplify the scene. Now the first thing is I have to deal with this with this cube. And I am painting flat, which is kind of weird, but it, it makes it a little bit easier for the camera. Uh, so that's nice for you guys, not so nice for me. But we're going to go ahead and start by dealing with this cube and asking ourselves what is the view that we're seeing this cube in. It is a corner view. Or for those that know perspective, it's a two-point perspective view. Uh, it looks like these angles should be splayed out a little bit more. So that's the, now would be the time to do that. And that just means the angle will open up. So we're going to open that angle up, and that will in turn will change the way this these angles go. So it, it's in other words, it's going to we're going to see less of the top is what that's going to change. So I'm going to go ahead. Now I'm going to put an image on here to show you what I was painting from. But always remember that it's, it's really hard to get the exact same image. And again, I've, I've, uh, I've done this too where I've watched people's videos and I'm like, man, they're not painting what I'm seeing. And it's just because of the fact that they've got a slightly different view. It is really difficult. I've seen very few places where they've actually been able to match it because it takes it, you know, it can take almost an hour and a half to get the exact view with what the artist is seeing. And they'd actually have to view the footage and the film and, you know, really match it up. And most people just aren't taking that, it just even, you know, professionally, they're just not taking that that sort of time. That's that's a lot of time uh, to do. And so, um, and so it's very common. So if you're, if you do that and you're like, well, goodness, I, 
they're not even looking, hardly looking at it. Look at that. It, it's not even what they're, it's, that's not what, what, what they're saying. Uh, just remember it's because again, the, of, of what's happening. Um, okay. So there are times when we do, we make good choices, times when we make bad choices. That right there, I decided that that's not where I want that. So don't be afraid to go, mm, no, I ain't doing it. I'm not doing that. It's not going to work for the picture. You're going to be better off in the long run if you just change, wipe it away and move it. And the reason why is because I hadn't, you know, my composition wasn't going to work. Uh, things weren't going to be able to fit on here. So I'm going to want to move this over. In fact, I'm probably going to move it to where it's about right here. And maybe I'll, for composition's sake, maybe I'll start this with a rectangle that I'll then turn into a cube. And that way it can help me with the composition side of things. So that's, you know, that's not a bad thing to do either where you're like, okay, well, for my, for my composition, I'm going to see how this is going to work. And then I'll worry about the rest later. Um, again, I don't like where this is, so I'm going to move it over a little bit. I also think it's a little large. So again, for when we're doing composition, we can, uh, simplify things. And I'm simplifying this apple into a circle. And I'm looking at where, how, how much the circle comes uh, out from the, the, uh, the cube and, 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 and what its basic relationship is to it. And I'm using a lighter gray because I can always go darker, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to darken this gray later. Um, so if I do that, now this is why originally I, I figured I was going to keep this smaller, but I'm getting to the point where I don't want to really go smaller than what I've already got. So I'm going to add a little bit more to the side. If I was working on a canvas where I couldn't do this, guess what? I'd have to reconfigure this again. I'd have to go ahead and make some more decisions. Um, but that's all right. We're, you know, this is just a study. I'm not, I'm not worried about this too much. This isn't something where... And sometimes classes, I, when I was, you know, in school, and I still see this, uh, I swear sometimes people are doing uh, videos to, to teach, but they're also kind of like, oh, look at how good I am. You know, like it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 a port, it's, it's a piece to make people go, ooh, I'm just so intimidated by how good this person paints or what have you. And that's not what this is about. We're, we're really trying to simplify this down. Uh, this is really just trying to be, hey, here's how I make a painting. Uh, I, this is not where I'm going to try to make you guys like, oh, oh look how great he is. We're not, we're not doing that. This is going to be basic technique. We're using basic color. And don't get me wrong, in the beginning, this is still going to be plenty hard. It's not like we're dumbing down the information and, and you're going to, you know, not learn anything. You'll learn something. It's just, I'm, I'm just letting you know right now, the aim of this is to really show the process and not to be like, oh, is this is, you know, just me performing on the, on the stage, that's not, I don't, I've, I've never been excited about that as a, as an art educator. Now I'm, I've been a professional artist for near 20 years. So when you're doing that, then yeah, you have to, you have to bring it, you know, and, and that's, and that's fine. But for, you know, just people that are just getting start starting out, you know, and people in my class painting one, that's, that doesn't really help anybody. You want to go ahead and say, okay, let's, let's distill this down to the easiest, easiest way to deal with this stuff to help you so you can actually learn and not be intimidated by it. <clears throat> There's, like I said, painting is hard enough. We don't need like any extra, you know, intimidation factor. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So, Now, when we're doing this, we have to remember that we were thinking of the three sets of three lines that are, that are parallel or parallel-esque. For those that know perspective, well, then you go, yes, and they would be going to a vanishing point. And for anyone who just mentioned that and mumbled in another breath while they're watching me do this, you are exactly right. This would, these would be going off to a far distant vanishing point, and we'd be thinking about depth. I could take a measurement to check from side to side how it's going in terms of this. This is almost what we call a true 45-45 view, 
meaning that we see about the same of both sides. Uh, and so that's what I'm drawing. I'm drawing a, a cube that you can see about the same amount of both sides of this cube. And this cube is also looking uh, to me a little short, so we're going to go ahead and lift him up a little bit. Um, because right now he looks too much like a box, uh, meaning that he's not a box. Is anything other than a, than a than a cube? I usually refer to as a box, uh, where it's not as tall as it is wide as it is, as it is deep. Um, this is getting a little closer now. I'm also drawing in again. This is flat, so I'm drawing a little bit in perspective. So this actually is probably a little taller from your view than what I actually see it because of the fact that I'm I'm drawing it in perspective. And so, now I'm standing to take a look at this and I go, yeah, now it's stretched and now it's almost a little too tall. But it's not, I'm not going to worry a ton about this. This isn't, you know, it's not like I'm doing a cityscape or an architectural rendering or something where you really got, again, where we really have to bring it. We just have to have enough information in, in, in a clear enough way that it looks like it will work. So again, are these three lines again parallel or are they actually converging slightly that's the more important thing to be happening here with our little with our little cube now again I think this is too close to the edge of this so we're gonna go ahead and this will now be the edge of the painting I'm gonna put my little This is going to be the little tangerine right about there. It's so small. It's, in fact, sorry, I know I just probably, I was standing up to see the perspective a little better, but uh, this thing was just so small. So again, part of artistic prerogative is sometimes painting what you wish was there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this slightly bigger because it'll look better. And this is actually, this is a small tangerine. These are those, uh, the, the little ones that peel really easily. So it's, they're even smaller already. Uh, and they go by a few different names over here in the West. Uh, but I'm making it about the size that it would normally be. And so I've just made it a little bigger. That's again, my artistic prerogative. So sometimes people can, can sometimes use that term too freely, but basically we're like, okay, here's what I'm seeing now. What, what do I wish I was seeing? Uh, again, because I'm not trying to do an exact replica. Now, I'm not changing this so much that I'm going to make it into some sort of, uh, you know, where I'm, I'm removing it so far from reality that it doesn't seem to read like, you know, it's the same scene. I'm not going to do that. So that's going to be dividing right through the middle. I think we're going to lift this table a little bit more. This is a des design decision. So this is... I'm trying to decide where the table will be. I don't want to cut this right in half. This was you know, almost in half. It was actually probably closer to, to the fifths. Um, and I, was, I tried to lift it. I think I'm going to go back to where I was, but uh, I don't think it was straight. So we're going to go ahead and straighten this out. So now I'm going to have, so I'm, I'm changing. You'll see that in the picture, this has the cloth and it curves up behind it. We're actually going to drop it out and do it, make it a simple plane. So this will be like this is a flat, this is a flat table. No curving, you know, or anything like that. So this will be tablecloth, a wall. We're just going to simplify it. And um, the wall that I've got is my my wall is an is an ivory sort of wall. It's not quite ivory. It's a little more neutral than that, and slightly lighter. But we're going to it will give us a little bit more depth. Uh, while we're, uh, and it, it's not going to be as much detail. Again, we don't want, this isn't, this is just a, you know, something we want to do in two hours. We don't want to spend like, you know, five hours painting this thing, trying to render. So this, again, we're just dealing with basic concepts. This is just the seventh session, painting session, and it will get more complex as we go forward. But for today, we're trying to keep it rather a little bit more uh, simplified. And uh, so we're going to, again, we're going to start to, this apple is a little too round, so the apple is actually a little wider at the top. And then as it comes down, whoops, it gets 
a little thinner through the bottom. A little wider at the top, a little thinner at the bottom. Um, and that's we want we want a nod to that. Now I like drawing with uh, my my paintbrush. Now you could do this with charcoal, or you could do it with something like really 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 fine hard graphite pencil, like a four H or a six H. You want to be careful with graphite because it just it it doesn't absorb into the paint the same way, and all of a sudden you're never going to get rid of that in one layer. You're always, there's always going to be this silvery graphite gray that's there. And if you're doing three or four or six layers of paint, uh, it's not a, not a problem. If you're doing something that's what a la prima, which is what we're trying to do, everything, which means everything in one sitting, not a good decision. Um, so you can use just a regular charcoal, make it sure it's the hardest charcoal pencil you've got because the more charcoal you put on the canvas, the more it's going to mix in with your paint. So it's like painting with black. If, uh, and some people really don't like that. Now I don't have a problem with black because as long as you know how to use it, it's not a problem. But for some people, you know, they've been told that it can't, you shouldn't do it, never do it, all this sort of stuff. And so they don't like to, to do that. Now, I was just checking this to check where this apple is in terms of, so you rarely want to cut something in half. This is cutting this right in half. Um, and that's a composition thing. So if that's a big deal to me, well then I would move this out. Uh, either move it out this way or move it out this way, or move it in this way. Um, for this one, I don't really think that it's a big deal, but I'll do it anyways. Normally I'd be like, okay, I know I wouldn't do this on a, on a final sort of a thing, but on a, on a little comp like this, it's not a big thing. But we're going to do it anyways. Let's go ahead and act like we're trying to, you know, this was something we want to, you know, enter in like a local competition or the local fair, you know, painting, you know, comp whatever. Uh, so we want to sort of crank it up. Well, then we just move this over. Is all we would do. We'd have to go over here and go, nope. And so with checking this, this was slicing this in half. Where does this slice the tangerine? It doesn't try, it's, it's not quite in half. It's kind of a third and two thirds. Actually, it's probably two fifths versus three fifths. And that's fine. And you might be like, what's the deal with the fifths? Well, that's, that's a classic, uh, it fits into the golden section and the golden mean and all this sort of stuff. And it's just a nice design principle is what it, is what it boils down to. For those that really get, want to get into it, well, then you're dealing with basically part of the Fibonacci sequence and phi, or you've probably heard of one point. Well, there are more people tell, people are talking more about it than they than they used to. It used to be very common, but in the latter part of the 20th century and even the early part of the 21st century, the contemporary art movement kind of really did a number on the art training in this country, and so you didn't hear as much about it. And now you're hearing people talk more and more and more about, you know, phi and 1.618 and dynamic symmetry and these sorts of ideas. And it's just, it's a natural idea and design that is echoed throughout nature. So if you measured your, you know, if you get for people to get into it, you could measure from like your, your middle finger to the, to your wrist. And if you start breaking it down, it starts breaking down into that 1.618 to 1 and all this good stuff and if you deal with fifths that's part of that part of that proportion and idea and stuff so some people will say thirds but you can also go to fifths um, as far as that goes one third two thirds or two fifths three fifths um, all right so we got this moved over uh, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start to rough in the background and so um, oh shoot, I didn't do this. Oh yeah, I did. It's just, it's drying. So what I think I'm going to do, because again, if you, if, if you don't have any wet paint on here and if this is dried out, the paint won't move as well. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and put sort of a thinner, uh, a little bit of a thinner wash down and then we're going to go ahead and, um, 
take a little bit of this orange, take a little bit of this blue, take a little bit of this red gunk. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to neutralize, I could use the brown too, um, uh, trying to make this sort of a neutral yellow orange. Now this has a little bit too much yellow because if I'm not careful, this will start to look like, you know, the wall will start to look like it's got jaundice or something. Or, you know, it's it's sick or something like that. Um, so, and we don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and we don't want it too yellow. So as we lighten this, it's going to go ahead and start to get lighter. We're going to come right back. All right, so this is like a little bit on the yellow side. I want a little bit more red to it. So we're going to test a tiny bit of that red. Now that red has a high tinting strength and look what happened to that. Now we got pink. Well, that's okay. So what we're going to do is we'll take a little bit more of the yellow back in here. Okay. Now this is too bright still. We need to neutralize it. So we're going to take a little bit of the black and white, which has blue. And remember when we add, this is orange, this is blue. When we add them together, it neutralizes it. Well, this is orange as well. And so when we add this blue to it, it's going to make it more neutral. Now it's too dark, so we're also going to make it lighter. Okay, so we need to keep this, again, fairly neutral. The problem that people have when they first start painting is they have their paint, it's just too bright everywhere, and, and they don't, and they can't deal too well with neutrals. Um, now that's fine, but it's, again, too dark. I think it's, in fact, most of it's too dark. I'm going to go ahead and move this over, because I think I'm going to use some of that for the, the cube. That leaves quite a bit less in my brush. And now I'm going to add quite a bit of white. Now as we add white, again, it always goes cooler. See how now it feels almost violet. Because again, it's, it's, it's shifted to the, this was sort of a orange, but now we've gone to sort of the, the red, a little bit of red violet. Now I did mix a little bit of orange in there, so I can bring some of this in. Just to shift that hue, bring it back to where I wanted it to be in the, in, in the first place. And so now we've got this, this color right here. And again, I think it's just a little bit too dark, so we're going light, to lighten it. Now, every time we add white, see what happens? It loses lots of intensity and it goes cooler. It's once again gone to sort of this red-violet color. Um, very, very soft. Now, sometimes the, uh, the cameras uh, will shift the hue because of their white balance. So the way I'm, I'm calling it out with my eye might be slightly different than what it looks on the screen because cameras don't perceive color the same way we do. Um, so again, I'm, I'm, I'm making this lighter. Now again, this is where I'm sort of chasing my tail because I've added all this white and it's still too dark. So I'm going to take most of this and I'm going to put this over here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and take what's out of my brush, leave it there, wipe out my brush, and now we're going to go ahead and start getting serious. Serious amount of white. Okay, now we're talking. So this is now about a step nine on the value scale, and that's about what I'm looking for. It's still gone very, very violet, very, very cool. And so we're going to take a little bit of the orange and add it back there. Remember, it takes a lot to darken it, so this isn't going to darken it. All it's going to do is shift the hue. So now we're actually bringing some of that, that orange back into this. That was maybe a bit much, but I think we can tolerate it. Let's um, add a little bit more white. That'll temper the, the orange as well. And I think, let's go ahead and put that down there. Okay, so I think that's maybe a little much, but we're going to go ahead and use it anyways because it'll be much easier to modify this as we go forward. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do one other thing. I'm going to mix a... Uh, a lighter cooler version so I'm going to add a little bit of blue to this over here cooler meaning that it has blue to it so warm and cool orange yellow and red or warmer blue green and violet are cooler and I'm using it now there are a couple different uh, ways that things can be uh, warmer or cooler when you're adding it to paint though usually it means look I'm gonna be adding either blue or violet or green to cool it or I'm adding red or orange or yellow to warm it there are three different variations but of, of warm and cool, and I'm not going to get into those right now. But when you're talking about mixing, usually that's what it means. 
when you say, oh, hey, I'm warming a green, that means you're adding red or red orange or something like that. If you say, hey, I'm cooling down an orange, I'm gonna be adding blue or green or, or violet. So that's uh, sort of just a real quick uh, nuance on, on what we're talking about here. Now again, we're not, we're just gonna start to, we just want enough background to indicate that there's background. Uh, we are not trying to, uh, we're not doing a rendering. This is not photorealism. We're not dealing with that. We're just dealing with basic painting technique. So I grabbed a little bit of that gray that I pushed aside to, because this, this light will go from lighter to darker. And so I got this, this, uh, this, these darker grays over here that were just a little bit too dark for the light side, but they're fine for the shadow side. And this is a little bit of the warmer. If I wanted to go cooler, I can add a little bit of the gray to them, which has a blue gray tone. Blue is complement, which means as this goes over here, it's not only gonna be getting darker, but it's gonna get a little bit of blue to that half tone. And if it goes into shadow, it's really gonna start adding the blue. And so uh, when we first start painting, that can seem like, uh, what are you talking about? You know, I don't see that. And the more you look for color, the better your eyes will get at perceiving what color you're talking about. When I first start talking about blues and oranges, people are like, man, I don't know, what, what does he mean? Well, it just means that you're going to have a gray in here that's a little bit, uh, a, a blue gray to, to knock this orange back just a little bit, cool it down. Um, I could either, I've used blue or I've used uh, the this this gray blue over here. Either one will work, but you just have to use, you know, if I'm using straight blue, I have to be careful with it or it's going to overtake my mixture. So you just have to be very, very cautious when you're, you know, when you're using this. So again, we're just trying to, to very quickly, maybe I'll take just a little bit, and I'm taking just, I mean, there's so little blue in there, you can't even hardly see it on my brush. Okay, very little blue on there, but it'll be enough to tint that down. So again, we're talking about just little little shifts, little nuances, little nudges on this. This is, again, this is the, this has a little bit of blue in it, this light gray, and then this light gray is a little more orange. So again, we can contrast, and you'll see people do that all the time, where they're going from cooler to warmer, and it starts to vibrate. You don't want to overmix it when you're doing this. You want to leave some of the cooler versus the warmer. So again, you'll get a little bit more vibration. And it'll start to make stuff feel like light. Um, this comes down here to the table. So again, we're gonna go ahead. This should be getting a little bit darker. That's probably too much. I'm gonna lighten it. I'm gonna lighten it with this cooler gray again, just so, cause I think it's also a little too warm. But now it's getting a little darker as it comes down towards that, uh, you know, where the, the uh, table is against the wall. And so we're gonna have a gradation coming this way, a gradation going that way. We're, we're starting to have these wonderful gradations of value. Good times. Uh, that's what we want. That's when we're painting, that's definitely you know, what we want. So that this will have an illusion that we're looking for. Now I moved this apple over, so I have to keep that in mind as I'm cutting in. Now with, with paint, we actually will uh, push out, push in, push out, push in. So even if I trim this too much, I can always push more paint out when I when I cut this in with with my uh, color. Um, I just realized that this has to be lighter than the wall, so that tells me the, the so when we're painting we have to compare. Uh, people will call it comparative values. Some people will call it keying in the painting, and it just means that you're paying attention to the value relationships. Um, and so I've got this clay on there that's not quite as white as the tablecloth, but much lighter than the wall. So once again, I have to pay attention to how dark the wall is because it's, it's about light, plus it's about how light or dark the object is next to it. So if I've got a white object in the, in the, in the, in the foreground, the front, it, it might be light or close to white. As it goes into the middle ground, it's gonna drop down in value a step or two. As it goes into the background, it might drop down three or four steps of value. So again, we're, we're constantly trying to look, um, that's, you know, we could call it, talk about atmospheric depth, and we're gonna be doing some of that, meaning that things in, if the light's in the foreground, then things in the foreground, no matter, you know, are always gonna be lighter. And for this one, we said, well, what if it's white? Well then, okay, yeah, the white, it'll be white in the foreground, and as it drops down the middle ground, maybe it darkens by a step and a half of value or two. And if it drops down into the background, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna drop its value by, you know, another step or two of value because there's less light. 
So, anyways, um, that's what uh, that's what we're trying to to get on here. We're trying to get this uh, this uh, the value of the wall in relationship to what's coming next, what's going to be coming after that. And you always want to be, you know, we don't want to just put it off to the end. We want to be thinking about it now as we're cutting in this these objects. Because remember, if anything is more than uh, two value steps off, we have to we have to wipe it and then start again. And we don't want to do that if we don't have to. So again, we're going to uh, that's you know that's not something we want to have to do constantly. It's, otherwise, we're going to end up with a mess. And so I, I'm constantly looking up there to you know look at what this value is next to that, what that value is next to this. You know, back and forth and back and forth. And that's how we're, we're going to try to keep this this painting in the right relationship. So I've done enough on the background. Again, we're not here to render the background. The background doesn't matter as much. We're not even here. We're going to we're get just enough information on these other objects that they'll have some depth. Uh, I didn't put on the, uh, the form shadows. Um, now i got to keep in mind, I've got lots of lights on in this room. So this is washing out my still life just a little bit. So I'm also going to have to use my, my prerogative, uh, artistic prerogative and go, what would this look like if it wasn't doused in all this light? So we're going to try to, uh, as we're painting, keep in mind uh, the fact that things have changed because of, you know, the fact that there's all, the more light that you have, the more degrades your shadows, the more it blows your shadows out. And so I'm going to try to imagine it like the shadows aren't being blown out so much because of all the photo lights and everything like that that I've got on in here. Um, if we're using a better camera, I might be able to get a, you know, away with more of a low light situation, but we can still do this. There's going to be times where, you know, there's going to be more light on than what you might prefer unless you, you know, are in your own studio, but there's still, I've seen this all the time, they're like, turn the lights up, turn the lights up, and I'm like, um, you're going to be blowing out the still life, and then they end up with still lives that look like they're all blown out, uh, because they're not going, oh yeah, well, if I'm turning up the lights, it's going to degrade my image, therefore, I'm going to have to compensate for that, and, you know, go ahead and make it seem like that's not the case. Um, just something to keep in mind. So all that means is that the shadows are going to go a little darker. That's the long and short of it. It's like, yeah, that's that's all great, but what does this mean for me? Uh, it just means, again, that the shadows are going to be a little darker. So we're going to go ahead and these are going to be the cast shadows on this, uh, on this tablecloth. And these are actually probably still a little on the light side, but I'm going to start off with sort of the middle value. Shadows have uh, value relationships, or they they go lighter, they go darker. And again, this isn't. Uh, we're not going to try to take this to a super finished level. We're just going to try to get an, get it to a point where everything has the correct form shadows. We're not going to be doing detailing. That's not the point of this of this lesson. We're going we'll do some more stuff like that for the intermediate classes and the advanced classes and things like that. Um, and the studio classes and all that kind of stuff later on. But for right now, we just need everything to have. So this is shadow, uh, and then we're for this. Uh, this is light. This is the shadow on the on the tablecloth itself, as far as that goes. And again, it's probably going to go a little darker in some places. It may even go a little lighter in some places. We'll see. But first, we're going to just get everything roughed in. Um, now when we're dealing with white objects, like this tablecloth is white, but, um, we want to take off some of the white of the, uh, of the tablecloth, or the, the white, the white of the tablecloth, the white of the canvas, which indicates the white of the tablecloth. We don't want bright whites. We have to knock them down. If we don't knock them down, we're going to be in, in a lot of trouble. It just won't look right. And, uh. So that's what we're going to do. Now I'm going to start by sort of mixing a neutral, um, we want some of this orange in here too, kind of like the wall, but it's got to be lighter. It can't be as dark as the wall, it's got to be lighter than the wall. But what this represents is this will be the middle value for the table. 
So that means it's going to go lighter than this. By actually getting rid of the white and then punching in those lights with lighter paint, it will have a, a luminosity uh, that, that's hard to get any other way. If you're doing white clouds, get rid of the white and then come back with your lighter colors later. They will feel like white clouds. If you just if you don't, you just will invariably end up with a with a with a painting that's not as well done as you might like, and it won't have the illusion of something being white. So this is a very common technique of getting rid of your whites and then coming back and 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 then you know establishing those whites later on. But some people call this tinting out your whites. You know, there's lots of different terms, artists have their own, but it's a very common practice. And you're going to want to do it. Now, this doesn't seem that light because everything else is, you know, is, is complete white canvas. So sometimes when we do this, you know, you're, you're like, oh, no, it's a mistake. And it's like, no, 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 it's not. Uh, we're, you're fine. So we're going to again, now I should actually be touching some paint into these. Um, so sometimes you're going to sort of cut in over what you painted and you want that because you don't want little lines where paint isn't meeting paint. Better to go ahead and smush the paint together so that there is no, otherwise you get these amateurish little white lines around everything and you don't want that. Some artists, to prevent that, they'll actually spread those, they'll um, take an edge like so and they'll just destroy the edge. So that again, that you have paint that's over the whole area. And then you come back in and you repaint it. It forces you to repaint a lot of your areas. And so all your areas are well mixed. And so all your areas, again, don't have any of those white little, I didn't want to touch paint against paint, which again, is very, it looks very amateurish. And it just says, oh, I was too scared to actually make this into a painting. You know, as long as you, you haven't, you know, really destroyed it, you can, you can push paint around quite a bit if you know how to do it. And so that's, you know, that should be good news because that means we don't have to worry so much. It's very malleable. Again, I'm going to reestablish this later on. Again, people go, okay, yo, we'll go ahead and do that too. And again, a lot of artists will do that, um, professional artists. And it's because they're trying to get rid of, uh, so that when you come back in here, you have to reestablish the lines. Everything is paint is in, in, in a little bit, a little bit of paint here, a little bit, a little bit of paint there. Uh, and again, you want to, you have to have enough paint to, in order for this paint to move anyways. And so that's the other thing that again, if you're scared to put the paint down, you're not going to have enough paint in the end to actually make the painting feel like it's, it's being manipulated. So, and I really don't have very much paint. I, I need to really start putting more paint down. Sometimes I do watercolor videos and after the watercolor videos, which I've, I've done just today, I'm kind of thinking like a watercolorist. And right now I got, I got to transition back into, change gears back into oil painting because it's you know it's like switching between languages or something it's been a few years down in brazil and so i remember that where you'd have to switch for you speak in english for a while and then you had to switch back into portuguese and or you'd have to switch gears from portuguese back into english and it could be it, it can really uh, do a number on you but uh, it's not so, it's not so big a deal when you once you get used to it so again, this is going to have a softer look. It's going to look like it has a better relationship and everything else. We're going to keep um, defining the other areas. So I'm going to come back in here, grab a little bit of this orange. Now I'm going to start to put a little bit of the of the cash, uh, shadow because there's cast shadows on the on the cube as well. So this will be the cast shadow here now. Again, we move this over, but again, I have to remember that. So again, this will be my cast shadow. Has a little bit of the blue in there, so we're gonna get a little bit of sort of a warm uh, orange green going on there. And I might have to dull that down. That might be a little. I think it's too bright. I already think it's too bright, but. Um, Let's usually with temperature, something like it was like, oh, the value's right, but I might change the temperature. Usually we'll hold off on that until we have all the all the relationships in because we can't tell what that color is until we've got all the colors next to it. Uh, so I'm going to start cutting in this this cube. Now we're going to start with the lightest value of the cube, which is darker than the wall. 
and it's darker than of course the tablecloth which of course is lighter than the wall so and we need an orange that's neutral so we're going to start with this orange and then we're going to add now i can either add this blue but i have to be careful with it because it's so much more intense that it's gonna it, it can it's gonna do much more to the mixture uh see how green that's going so when i do that i'm gonna have to compensate for that by adding red okay that didn't that didn't temper this enough so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use the black now black will really absorb and knock down the temperature of a color i'm gonna use some of this sort of neutral red too uh, because if i'm not careful again with these with these bright colors you add too much and now you're 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 way too bright. Uh, black will really you know really take out the, the the chroma of a color very quickly. So will the brown and white, our, our warm gray as we'll call it, our orange gray. Uh, it will as well. So we have to be careful of that as we're as we're, we're dealing with this. Now, again, I'm going to look at the uh, look at the uh, the cube, and I'm going to say, hey, what is what is the value on that cube? And the value is somewhere around a step seven. So, wow, I gotta keep, remember, I see that, this is what happens when we, so we got this red that's really bright and I sh I, I'm, I'm sitting there talking and I'm not paying enough attention. But that's okay, this needs to go lighter anyways. Uh, we'll go, we'll, we'll lighten it with the white that's going to push it slightly cooler, slightly redder, and I'm going to lighten it a little bit with this gray. So again, I can knock out some of the uh, some of the temperature of this thing just a bit. And again, step seven on the value scale. So I'm I'm getting this to the point where I th I feel like, you know, that's where we're we're hovering at. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and say, all right, well this right here. Now that's probably a little bright, so I'm going to temper that with a little bit more of this gray. Uh, they're almost the same value, so it's only going to lower the intensity. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down. Now this has to be darker than the wall. Okay, done. That's what it is. It's darker than the wall. Since it's darker than the wall, it's also darker. So the lightest light of this cube is darker than that wall. Now part of the reason is because we have so much light bouncing around here. If I lowered the light considerably, took off my photo lights that I'm using for to, to record this, and, and had more of a spotlight in the dark, well this cube is going to get brighter as the wall and back gets darker. Sort of that Rembrandt lighting as some people will call it, in which case it's all about relationships. This tells us about what kind of lighting we have. This right here is a lighting scenario where there's light bouncing all over the place. Um, and so you could, this will change depending on what the lighting is going to be. So don't think that this is going to always be the case. There would be a time where I could set up a lighting scenario where the wall back there is going to be darker than the cube. It all depends about light since we're painting the illusion of light. Now we're going to go up here onto the top shelf and that top shelf again is a little darker by the step of value than this. So again, our this value up here, that's not dark enough. So we're going to take a little bit of the brown. Brown's got a little bit of blue, so it's going to go a little bit more. Uh, it's going to go a little on the green side. Um, so again, we're going to go ahead and put this in. And again, this is darker than this right here. Okay, so all right. So again, we're trying to put our value on up here. Value is a little darker than what this is right here, and I think it needs to go darker still. Now, there's a um, something that happens right along this edge where you get two edges that come together. One edge goes slightly darker. Okay. So we're gonna create a little of this illusion. So I'm gonna come in here with a little bit darker value. That was a little bit too much, but by the time we work that in, it won't be hardly anything at all. But it gets a little darker along this edge, and then as it moves over, it gets a little bit lighter. And that happens a lot with, with objects. Now there's a highlight we haven't put on here either. The highlight will also lighten that. Now we're not gonna worry about 
the um, we're not going to worry uh, about things like you know the the uh, the grain or anything like that because for right now we're trying to deal with values uh, if we and and things like details have to conform to the values if uh, if we start throwing detail in there and the details do not conform to the form shadows it will always look flat and that's what everyone wants to do They're like I want to go with the detail all oh, the details so fun let's go to the detail and don't spend enough time with the form shadows and that's where you drop the ball because if the form shadows aren't right the details won't light, look right and the illusion won't look right it's all about this basic stuff it's just like you know foundation for a building doesn't matter how cute the curtains are if the building's falling over because someone didn't take the time to check the foundation so it's even more you know for us it's even it's, it's even a bigger deal a uh, bigger deal than that so because if, if we don't take the time to to get the illusion right it'll always look like a flat painting and the object that we're trying to do is, is, is have something that doesn't look flat, but it looks like it has depth and dimension. And that's what we want. Create that illusion. that make people go, oh, wow, isn't that spectacular? And you're like, yes, it is. Or however you would respond, probably a little more responsibly than that, most likely. But, you know, we want to have something that looks good. Right? You don't want something that doesn't look good. And it's all about, again, those form shadows. As this moves over, the light gets, again, as, as this goes towards the light. There's an idea in painting, not just an idea, but to create the illusion of depth, you always have one edge going lighter when one goes darker. So this is our lighter edge. That means this edge is our darker edge. But not only that, as this edge moves closer to that lighter object, it will the, the lighter area, it will start to look a little darker. There's a... Uh, there's a term for that. I can I can have to look that up because I'm always trying to remember what the name of the term is. But it, it's something that photographers talk about all the time, because it creates it's actually happening all the time, whether we're aware of it or not. It's there, and we have to you know again as as artists we want to give a nod to what's actually happening. The same thing happens up here. If this is going darker, that's doing the same thing. So again, we're going to get up here on the top of that shelf, and as this gets closer to that white cloth. It gets slightly darker. Now, again, this looks might look fairly dark, but again, we don't have any of the other values in here. Um, we're also going to do the the uh, shadow. There's a cast shadow of this little tangerine over here, and so we're going to deal with the fact that we've got a cast shadow over here, and so our cast shadow is going to. You know, now we actually have to figure out what's going on with our with our drawing, which seems to be doing its own own thing. So we're going to bring this down over here. We're going to start to ask ourselves what's going on with this cube, because this looks like we dropped the shelf. This one looks like we brought it up. So we better make a decision. So I'm doing a little bit of modifying as I'm as I'm painting this to try to get it to look right. Otherwise, what's the point? All right. Bring this over here. Take this over there. All right. We're gonna just go ahead and keep painting this and bring this around. All right, so I went ahead and we cleaned up over here, cleaned some of the, the paint off. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and continue roughing this thing in. We're gonna go ahead and deal with the shadow side. So we have the, this is supposed to be the light mid values, middle values, shadow side. So we're gonna go ahead and get a little bit of the, a little bit of the blue in there. That's probably a little too much blue, but um, let's also see how dark this is. Uh, we want this to be uh, dark enough, but it has to be lighter than parts of this cast shadow. 
So again, it's all these all these uh, relationships become very important. And the shadows again, we're going to bring in some of the a little bit more of the the blues. Okay, so it has to be dark enough with the value. And uh, now I'm actually kind of doing this very 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 thin because I'm actually trying to deal with the the drawing part of this. So this is way too thin for us to to leave this or work with this in any sort of substantial way. But it is helping me to kind of get this drawn in. So I'm just drawing with a brush. So sometimes, uh, again, there's a lot of drawing to, to painting. And and uh, this is one of them. We're cutting in this shape with a, with a little bit drier brush so that we can actually get this to... Now this is sort of going out at an angle now. That's that's not a good thing. We don't want that. So I come over here and again we're going to try to move this this edge out. Probably have to cut in on this and then I think we'll leave that where it's it's going. So again, we're we're we're, de we're, de we're dealing with the you know the drawing aspects of the painting. Sometimes I, I tell people that the better we can draw, the better we can paint, and and so you're certainly using drawing technique while you're painting. Uh, sometimes people are like, "Well, it's painting. Why would you?" Well, drawing has to do with perspective and shape recognition and value recognition and angles and all that sort of stuff that's basic fundamental to drawing and it's fundamental to painting as well so they they overlap doesn't mean that they're exactly the same in every way shape and form but they do overlap in many ways and so the better you understand drawing which again is all about you know depth and of course, where it's depth in painting too, but all about perspective, all about it's of course about line, but it's also about shape and and value and all these you know basic relationships and those are the same things we have to have going on when we're painting. And again, we're still just getting this rough in. So so as we look at this, you know, we're going to get. Um, I think I'm going to change this to a little bit more of a a, a little bit of violet in here. Um, but it's got to be dark enough so I can check the values to see if the values are dark enough to work with everything else. Uh, we're not going to get a ton into this right now, but as this comes to this edge, this gets a little darker. And then as it comes over, it gets a little lighter. There's not enough paint down there to do a lot of these transition stuffs right now. Again, it's going to be darker this corner. It gets a little bit lighter as it comes down because of reflected light. And then it also gets a slightly darker down in this corner because it starts to pick up some of the reflected value of the shadow. As far as that goes too. Okay, but we're just gonna. So this is still the rough end part of this of this painting. I'm gonna go ahead and rough in the uh, little tangerine and the uh, and the the clay apple this is just a, a it's made out of, of a light clay a light gray clay and I use it in my classes to get people to start to be able to look for again the form shadows we're going to um, put in the the shadow side the a lot of okay so I'm going from orange to blue so the way we're going to do this, because again, I can rinse it out, but it'll never get all that out of there. So I'm going to grab a little bit more blue and um, work it in. Now this is a little stronger than what I want, but that's okay. Better to be a little stronger blue because we can dull down that much more easier than brightening up a too dull a blue. So, and again, we're going to go ahead and we're asking ourselves how dark is it? It's darker than this. Whoops but it's not as dark as that. So again, we're, we're looking for these relationships. And I need to, again, we need to overlap the paint so we get enough paint down, all this good stuff, right? 
So we're going to go ahead and put this down here. Now this is apparently the same value as that cast shadow. Now it's not that way in the, in the still life. So this is, for now I'm going to allow it, but we're going to separate this later so that they don't bleed in. They don't, they're not the exact same value. We don't want to keep that, that, that relationship there because it's wrong. Um, I'll go ahead and put that in here. This gets a little bit deeper. So maybe something about right there, a little darker still. I do a little over mixing now, deepen that down. All right, now we're gonna do the middle values. So not the lightest values in this, we're gonna use the middle values. Now as it goes in the middle values, it's gonna be warmer. So this is our, our brown and white, which is our warm gray. Um, Got a little bit of green going on in there, so we can take a little bit of this, a little bit of the blue, uh, a tiny bit of, of that green uh, sort of color. Uh, I brought a little bit of this warm. I also mixed the, took these warm grays from mixing the background, put them up there, because I'll use them. You know, I'll just, I just dipped into it right there. Um, this needs to get a little bit lighter. And I have to check it. Now it's, it's gonna be a little lighter than the wall, even the middle value, but not as light as the cloth. So that right there is still too dark. And I used again some of this yellow gray from the wall color. And so let's go ahead and try this. All right, now this is not supposed to be white. Okay, this is, this is not white clay. It's a light clay, but not a white clay. So, just want you guys to all understand that this is gonna, these are just our basic values, and the values are gonna go lighter and or darker from here. For the most part, I'm guessing a lot of this still life is actually gonna go darker. So I'm grabbing some more paper towel here. I'll wipe some of this blue out that I just got on there. Bring this back in. I'm trying to butter this on so I have my brush at an angle. Remember how important the angle is when we're doing a painting. That is very, very important. So we're going to go ahead and again bring this in. And this is again to get us, we're getting to the point where we almost have everything covered and then we can start to ask ourselves, where did we get it wrong? <laughs> it's always going to change. That's not a bad thing. We're like, okay, that's the, it's just the starting point. And then we're like, we're going to modify A, B, C, or D. So uh, I chuckle because that sounds like, you know, you, you're never going to get it right the first time. And, and you know, it's just, that, and that's fine. Uh, that's totally fine because again this is just the beginning stages this is like the first time you sit down at the piano to practice a new song you're not gonna get it the first time around you're gonna have to do a little bit of stuff you are have to put in some practice you're gonna have to get your brain around how the notes are changing and all that sort of stuff we're gonna have to do the same thing with this with the, the painting of this clay apple and we should expect that if, if you expect that not to be the case uh, you haven't painted very long because that's not the way it works. Uh, it's it's a process, and this is part of that process or process, whichever you know, however you like to hear that, you know, however you say it. Uh, the idea is is that it's gonna we are gonna have some of these changes, and uh, that's okay. So again, we're gonna we have that roughed in right there. Uh, we're now gonna put in the tangerine. Now the tangerine. It's gonna be the funnest part. And by the way, what I'm thinking about, I'm gonna take off that little bit of blue gray that accidentally got thrown in there. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna deal with the uh, tangerine, and this will be the funnest. Now, the interesting thing about the tangerine is it's darker than this. The lights of the tangerine are darker than this. So sometimes people see. Uh, let's go ahead and just put that that straight orange. And this orange is brighter, but it's darker than that. So again, this is why it's so important when we're painting to learn how to do
deal with values. And I think that's a little bit too light. So we're going to deepen this with just a little bit of brown. That was too much. So we're going to take a little bit of the red. Whoops, too much red. Pull out the rest out of our, out of our um, brush here. Put some more yellow in there. Put a little bit more yellow in there. Okay, now we're talking. Um, we just touch more red. Um, so again, now we've got this a little bit darker. Um, for uh, usually, I like to try to get the middle tones, uh, the middle values when we're when we're painting, and we're looking for the shapes again. What's the, what's the value? What's the shape? What's the value? So when, whether you're drawing or whether you're painting, the the question you're always asking yourself is, what is the value I'm looking for? What is the shape I'm looking for? What's the value I'm looking for? What's the shape I'm looking for? Went ahead and jumped into that 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 straight orange on the edge because that's going to be getting lighter and a little brighter. But right now, this is the darkest thing in this entire painting, is the tangerine. It's also the brightest in terms of its intensity. Uh, by putting this on here, to make this look brighter, this has to go duller. So now we know, oh, this is too bright in a, few, in a couple places. So again, this is why it's, it's key to get everything um, put in the painting so that you can actually start to make observations. And from those observations, make better decisions about how you're going to take the painting into a better uh, and improve upon it and, and do what's best for the, for the painting itself. And we're going to want that. It's going to, it's going to help in all kinds of ways. Um, a little bit of light that's still over here, so we brought that straight orange in. Now this again is still flat. We're not painting all the different, we're just trying to get for the, what's the light side versus the shadow side. Uh, there's a little bit of, it almost goes a little bit on the, you know, we said with those, there's some blue violet in the shadows, which means uh, we're going to take a little bit of violet. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of redder because of the orange itself. So we're mixing up the shadow side of our, of our orange. So the shadow side of our orange is going to be something close to about right here. It's actually a little bit darker than this, but this is supposed to be the middle value in the shadows. So we, we, we look for those middle values in both the lights and, uh, and, the, and the darks. And that's how we're going to start our drawing, or our painting in this case. We do the same thing if we were drawing. We wouldn't be using a brush though, but we'd be still doing the same sort of ideas with our with our drawing as we would be with this painting. So we're going to start off with the shadow shape, which is about like this. There's a little, there's a, it, this folds over and then there's another little bump and that's what's causing that. And there's a little bit of that happening down here too, where there's another little bump. So we can put some of that down there. And this is the basic, um, we got the whole thing sort of roughed in, the basic idea of this. And uh, now we can actually start painting. This is just the, the beginnings. This is the rough end. This is the, be the beginning of the painting. It's not the end. It's just the very, very, very beginning. Okay. So uh, there's a little stem up there. And I got too big of a blob, but that's all right. I can come in here and change that later. It's all good. All right, so now that I've, <clears throat> pardon me, now that I'm looking at this thing, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start to, this. I think this wall value needs to go a little darker in some certain places, so we're gonna deal with that um, as far as that goes. And so, hmm, a little too bright actually. All right, bring this in. A little too much. Now there's just enough paint so we can actually 
move this stuff around, which again is what we want. Don't want that little ghost line that we've got there, so we're gonna take that out by, by darkening this. A scotch, a little bit. Uh, a smidgen, as my grandmother used to say, uh, when she was cooking stuff, a dash of this and a smidgen of that. We're doing the same thing. A little touch here, a little touch there. Why not? Why wouldn't you? Um, and the end will have, you know, a little painting. And maybe to, to celebrate, you'll go and make yourself some cookies. Uh, not, not a bad idea uh, sometimes. So again, we're gonna go ahead and I got this, I got this softer brush that I'm, I'm working this, uh, this in here. And so keeping it fairly neutral, because again, it's, it's not supposed to be bright. We wanna be very careful that this does not go you know, too bright. There's a little bit of green in here too, so I, I'm just grabbing a little bit of that. Um, it's actually a little bit more on the bluer side, so. But we can get these soft variations. Now you don't want to, the one thing you don't want to do is you don't see me like over, you know, like brush, 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 brush. If you start doing that, it's, you're going to start to get oatmeal. Uh, and you're going to lose any and all depth that you're, so I'm constantly picking up paint and I'm constantly working that paint back into the painting. Uh, we, we, we want that, we need that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give us some depth on this thing. Okay, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it so I darken the wall a little bit. So the wall will push back. And the other thing we can do to push back is, is again, I had, I had uh, green, but you, there's also, again, a little bit of blue that starts to come into here. And again, as things as, you know, go into shadow, they're going to get slightly bluer. And so it's going to be happening on the wall there, too, not just on, you know, the, the tangerine or what have you. And now this is dark enough. We're starting to see that the the table's starting to look light. You know, it's 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 really starting to separate. Um, usually, as you get towards the wall, again, this will start to block the light, and we'll get a little bit of an edge start to happen there. So let's see if I can go ahead and grab just a little bit of this stuff and darken this just a scotch. As it as it gets as it gets closer to that wall, there's going to be a, a, a gradation of tone and value, and let's, do, let's go ahead and grab a different brush. So we're going to continue to try to get again some gradations going on in here. You know, it doesn't take much. I'm using very light pressure. I'm trying to keep the brush at an angle that's more parallel so I can, you know, I can work this around. And again, we're starting to get a nice, you know, sort of a gradation here. That's too dark. Bring this up. Bring this in now. Okay, that's that's better. Um, we want it to get a little bit darker down here. That's too much again. But let me go ahead and just put this together. Soft, you know, so, soften those edges as, it, as it's coming forward. And then we're, I'm going to go ahead and start to load this with some paint because, again, you don't want to just, uh, if you start over blending, it will start to, and this is a soft brush that I'm using. This is not a bristle, this is a blender, some people call it, but I can also use it to put paint on. So I'm not blending very much. I'm putting it down, I'm putting a stroke or two on it, and then I reload the brush. That is very important. If you don't, if you start doing the stroke, stroke, stroke more than three times, you stroke any one area, you're going to destroy the painting. You, there's there's like a, a rule that if you stroke it once, that's that's perfection. You stroke it, you stroke it a second time, that's, a, that's good. If you stroke it a third time, you can deal with it. It's plausible. It's great. Any more than that, you have to load up the brush and start again. And if you don't, again, you'll end up with this, these awful textures. You'll pull all the paint off of it. You won't have any ability to blend. You, you know, you just start losing on all fronts. 
and it's it's not it's 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 not fun. It's not what you want to have happen to your painting. Who would? So we're gonna go ahead and bring some paint against that a little bit. Okay. So again, trying to stroke stroke this stuff as little as possible, as little as we we have to, or as little as, as we can get away with, and. Um, and bring a little bit more warmth, so I got a little bit more of the, uh, the. So there's some orange in here, a little bit more than what I had before. And now our wall is is going back a little bit more, so that's good. Now we're going to go to the next area again. We just want this enough, so that we have some depth. We, we're not trying to do lots of detailing. So we're going to go forward. So now we're going to ask ourselves, well. Um, how dark are those shadows? Now, uh, the cast shadows, that is. And the cast shadows, depending on where we're looking, and some are getting degraded again by, by all the different bits of light. So we've got these cast shadows right here, but the cast shadows are a little darker than what we originally made them. They're supposed to be darker than the lights of the, of the, of the tangerine. But right now they're about the same which means they're too light. So we're going to go ahead and begin to deal with darkening these shadows. Now we're not going to darken them a ton and they certainly are not black. I'm using like a middle value right here. A middle gray. Now it's a blue gray because we want it to be blue in the cast shadow. But it's not black. These are not black shadows. Uh, I'm not going to get rid of all that lighter gray. We're going to want some of a transition. And there's going to be a couple places where it's going to get slightly darker than this because of, uh, you know, the occlusion shadow and, and things like that. But there is going to be, we want some of this original paint so we can make it slightly lighter as it comes out. Um, as far as that goes, all that good stuff, yada, yada, yada. Uh, we're going to go ahead and lighten this a little bit. You see we're munching into our into our cube a little bit that's all right we're gonna come back in here we're gonna you know we're going to play with that a little bit more so forth and so on not that big a thing so we're gonna to continue to put this in and again this background stuff is not the main event we're really here to look at the it's really about these three objects here we need just enough information in these other areas so that it will look right we don't need to detail every last bit, nor do we want to. We're just trying to get um, a little bit of this, a little bit of this painting happening, so it will look like it could be. So, you know, that that's certainly the way it could be. Um, again, we're not sitting here to to detail this thing out or what have you. So we're going to continue to. Lighten this up. Or as that goes. You make this a little darker as it goes back. A little darker still as it goes back. back in here cut around there so again this is our middle gray all right coming around here now so we're going to try to keep a little bit more control over what's happening with the line I like that how that came out a little bit more because I think it needed a little more volume um, we're then going to get in here a little bit darker still and a little bit more blue and we're going to go ahead and again we're going to make this a little darker as this comes around through here uh, again we're just going to darken it down a little bit give us some value in the shadows just a just a scotch a token if you will we, we need some of this happening. 
Maybe we'll come down here and put some. We're gonna start at this point. There's gonna be a point which we have to start over mixing. Uh, for those that may, if you do not remember, over mixing is where we have to make it darker. So by the time it mixes, it'll be the color that we want. So again, I'm gonna put this in here. And when we first start, it looks really, really dark. But we're not gonna leave it like that. We're going to go ahead and just stroke it a couple times. And as we do, it's gonna kind of get considerably lighter much more quickly. So again, this is called over mix, or pardon me, under mixing. Over mixing is where we make it lighter. Under mixing is where we're gonna make it darker. And that's so by the time it mixes and by the time we've stroked it a little bit, it's gonna be the value that we want. And that's, you know, again, there's a lot, you know, to the, getting used to paint, if there's already paint there, we have to deal with it. Well, under mixing and, under, and over mixing is how we deal with it. Going, hey, I know what that value is. I'm gonna darken it by three steps of value. And then by the time I put it in there and I stroke it once or twice, it's only gonna change that by maybe half a step. So it's, it takes a lot to really change the values of the painting. In fact, if you, have to, if you have to change substantially the values, go ahead, do yourself a favor and wipe the area and start again. It, what happens if, if, we're way out of, if we're way out of, you know, we're not anywhere near the value we need to do, be as a beginning painter, you're like, oh, I'll just keep piling the paint on. And you start fighting the paint and fighting the paint and fighting the paint. And all you do is you, you get this awful texture that you keep building up, and it's usually still not what you want. And by the time you're done, you're just like, man, you can just tell from looking at the painting that, that you struggled with it over and over and over again. And we, we want this to look like it was easy, not that it was, you know, you know, not look like we, it, it was a battle and a war. All right, so we're going to continue to develop this. All right, so we're just going to continue to... You can get the get some gradations going on in these shadows. I'm paying, I'm spending way too much time in these shadows, but I think I have enough on here now that I can go ahead. Hopefully, um, let's see if we can use a, a light gray for this, just in case. But we're going to try to soften the edge. So there's a there's a, as as cast shadows get further away from where they start, they get softer. The edges get softer. So we can start off by coming over here and blowing out the edge a little bit, or quite a bit, it looks like. Again, I'm not, I don't want to, using a light grade, I'm not trying to over blend. You remember, you only stroke a couple times, so you keep picking up new paint and working it in. So I'm working now, so I softened the edge and blew it out, and now we're coming back in with some darker paint again to sort of reestablish the edge, but it's going to stay softer because I'm smushing the paint around. I'm, I'm softly playing with doing edge work. Um, and if you're going to modify it, pick up new paint and put it down. Don't just keep moving what's there around or you're just going to keep stripping the paint off. And soon you'll, you just won't have anything left. It won't look good at all. So. All right, so there we go. We're gonna we're not gonna play with this anymore. We could, we could sit here and play with it for a half hour and make it look like it's just the most beautiful little shadow. But again, I'm picking up lighter paint. There's a little bit through here that just doesn't. Didn't, I'm gonna blow out that that uh, the edge a little bit. Then we're gonna come back in and we're gonna blend back against it just a little bit. And we, that way we have paint on top of paint, so that I can just blend the edge. And again, that can be a very effective way of dealing with our edge work, right? Now again, this isn't, we're not dealing with photorealism, we're not dealing with even realism, we're not dealing with high amounts of detail, we're just not dealing with that. Uh, this is just to, to get basic, you know, basic things addressed, which edges are basic, they're fundamental. And so we don't wanna make it seem like we don't care or that we don't understand that again, as the shadow comes out from here, it's gonna get a little, a little softer, bring a little lighter gray there soften that edge and then bring a little darker gray and then just kind of stroke them together a little bit and that will soften your edge. Okay, um, voila, so to speak. Um, if we want to, this would be the time uh, to do this. And so if we're gonna go, okay, well let's put some of these nice, these nice bright whites or what have you. 
Um, take just a touch of the the red. And I'm going to take a whole lot of white. Whole lot of white. Okay. Let's make this white a little bit nicer consistency. It's too stiff. Um, again, we got to be careful that it's not too yellow. Like this right here might be just again just a little bit too yellow. So we're going to bring some of the orange in so that it's it, it's just that it's not too yellow. We don't want it to look like you know it's this dingy, dirty color. That's that's not going to be. Now I got that too dark. I think I need some nice, pure, clean white. Okay. And so now what we're going to do with this, and this will be, again, the white where it's supposed to be. Now I'm going to have to do some overmixing. What is overmixing? Again, that's where we're lighter. And not only lighter, but this is duller, so we're going to have to go brighter. So I'm going to go straight orange into this. And maybe I can't go. Um, now, if I was, now I've, I've got a. I've got a uh, I'm using a brush that's a softer brush, so it's not going to pile the paint on. In the beginning, I don't want people piling paint on. Okay, As you get more comfortable with paint, well then we can work and we can just start piling paint on. But what normally happens is people pile the paint on hoping to save an area of the painting that's not working. And what it instead looks like is that area has been overworked. Uh, and so, and that's what happens. You just keep putting it on, little strokes, putting on, dab, 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 until it's finally the the value or the color we want. We're like, oh, isn't that great? And then you take it in, and people go, wait, what is? What did you do? And they're like, what? Doesn't it look fantastic? Um, and usually the answer is no. And uh, and I've been there. Everyone has to start. Well, one th wonderful thing about painting is everyone has to start at the same place. Everyone has to start at the beginning. You don't get to start start at the end where you're all like, I'm fantabulous. No, you have to start at the very beginning where everyone has to struggle, everyone has to learn. You know, it's 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 not something that just is gonna magically, mystically, you know, happen. And so what we want to do is we want to be able to make it seem like it was effortless. So again, I if if so I'm I'm keeping this fairly parallel to the surface, so every time I add paint. It's it's not putting that much paint down. If I can start to see lot the the texture of each stroke, that is too much paint. Okay, so we don't want that. That's something that we don't want. We want to keep it at least in the beginning. Again, there's times where again I do impressionistic painting. I've certainly done paintings where you have paint strokes that are three three eighths of an inch thick or half an inch thick or get out the palette knife and slather it down. And I I've done that, but you don't do that in the very beginning because you can't control the paint. And you're going to burn through a whole lot of paint, a whole lot of expense, and because you haven't learned how to use paint, it most likely is not going to work. And so I don't want to make people do stuff, you know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous until you kind of get a, a feel for, oh, that's how that works, okay. Uh, well, then go ahead and start, you know, piling on paint and stuff. So, again, we're, gonna, we're, we, we're, we're, we're still painting. We're, we got enough paint so that we can actually move stuff around, but we're not trying to put so much paint on there that we can, we're doing, like, you know, heavy impressionistic impasto or something like that. We're just not doing that. And it doesn't make sense to do that in the beginning. You know, get get 12 or 15 paintings under your, your belt where you really feel com comfortable and confident that you know what you're doing. And then start working with stuff like that. You'll have a much better experience. And I said, you know, 10, 15, that's really not that many paintings. So it's not like you have to do it wait forever. It's not like you have to paint for four years before you try something like that. You just, you need, but you, can, you don't want to just start out in the beginning. You know, like that. If you're just starting piano, never played piano before, and like, I want to play, you know, Mozart. Throw me the Mozart. Well, you're probably going to not do that, that great a job. Because you don't know how to play piano. You know, or, or any other one. It doesn't have to be Mozart. It'd be just, you know, any sort of advanced to intermediate sort of song. is probably not going to... It's not going to... You're not going to do all that well with it because of the fact you haven't, you haven't learned it yet. Well, once you learn it, you can work into doing stuff like that. So that's that's all we're talking about is give yourself some time. We're all excited in the beginning to do the really hard stuff and the advanced stuff, and and you can. It, it just but it does take time. Give yourself time. Give yourself a break. 
Let yourself learn. Don't be afraid of the learning process. It's something that will, um, something that's going to take some time, but once you do it, well then, again, you, you only have to do it once. You know, you, well, you, you know, obviously it's going to be a process. You're going to keep learning, learning. But after you get to a certain level, well, then you can go and go, oh, yeah, I played enough that I'm in an intermediate level. So I can play songs that are of an intermediate difficulty and oh now I'm at advanced level I can take in I can take on harder and harder songs I can I can ratchet up the difficulty absolutely well it's the same thing with painting it's no different than playing an instrument or you know you name it uh, If you're learning to do ballroom dance or something, you're not going to start off doing gold level stuff. You're going to start off with, you know, bronze level or even be maybe just social dancing and then work your way to bronze and then work your way to uh, silver and then work your way up to gold. I mean, you want to be able to learn how to do it properly and you'll be, it, it'll make you a stronger dancer. And it's the same, again, same thing with, with painting. We want to take the time to learn and if you if you take the time you'll learn better you'll be stronger uh, and and it'll just it'll just be much better for you if you try to go you know uh, further than what you can than what you're able you first off usually you're not going to perform as well and then second people normally will become very very frustrated and some will will even give up because it's so hard well it is and it should be uh, because it's it's not something you just do haphazardly off the, you know, it takes some time. It takes stuff to, it takes time to learn this stuff. Now there's a reason. I remember someone telling me this story about, he had a friend that was like, yeah, I'm going to, had never, had never worked in a ceramic studio and was like, yeah, I'm just going to go and, yeah, I'm taking this class. I think I'll throw myself a set of dishes. And this other guy, you know, he was an artist, and he he'd done some ceramics. That wasn't his major, but he'd done something. And he's like, yeah, yeah, have fun with that. And of course, the guy came back and was like, man, that's harder than I thought. He couldn't even hardly, you know, center, uh, which is again a basic skill, as I understand. I think that's what it's called, um, where you center the clay and pull it up and down to get the the uh, clay to be pulling the right direction. I don't know if that's the correct terminology. Obviously, I'm not. A, a ceramicist but um, you've seen people do it probably and uh, he's like wow I got a whole new respect for ceramicists well I don't know why people would think that I think because it's like oh well they're working with mud that must be simple uh, then that's just it's not it, it, it's 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 an art form it takes time it takes ta you know it, uh, talents the wrong word it takes time it takes learning I always believe that talent comes from learning that everyone may be born with some innate, innate skill or something, but that doesn't matter. The skill is actually, it's once you start to develop the skill, that's what matters. And you could point to some, oh, well, what about so-and-so, some, you know, person that lived that was like the extraordinary example. Well, there's already going to be people like that. But most of the people that are professionals are not those extreme examples. They're, they're just an average Joe that decided they wanted something and put the time in. And that's what painting is, deciding what you want and putting the time in. It's a skill. And, you know, that's that's what's going to, if you, you know, keep with it, it's what's going to make you good. It's what's going to make you, uh, you know, again, high, highly skilled. <laughs> that's, I keep, you know, I'm thinking of a different word, but yeah, skilled is, is definitely the word. Uh, but you're going to learn to do it and do it well. And that's that's what we all want. That's all, you know, what we, we hope for. And that's what we're doing here is we're trying to start to build that, you know, let's get good with this thing. Let's, 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 uh, make it happen or whatever the, the term is we want to use. But that's the idea that we're just going to go ahead and start to make this work. So I'm looking for the light values for the form shadows, light values, middle values. Uh, so we've got light values, middle values, highlight. Um, that's too dark. I 
There we go. I just need a little bit of warmth in here. A little bit of that. Okay, laying that down fairly gently, fairly lightly. And, uh, and then we'll come over here for the for the brighter stuff. Now, generally when we're painting, people will say you want the, and we're gonna wanna do the same thing, but they're gonna say, yeah, you want the shadows thinner and you want the lights built up a little bit more. So you want the most texture, the most paint, and the lights, and you want the shadows thinner. Now there's times if we're doing some contemporary art idea, we may not do that. We may, we may turn that on its head but if you're trying to do representational painting, if you're trying to do photorealism, if you're trying to do hyperrealism, well then yeah, and you're dealing with paint, um, or even if we're dealing with pencil, you want the illusion of the most texture, you know, the most surface texture in the, in the middle values and in the light side, it, it starts to fade in the shadows. So um, with paint, we're, we're dealing with texture. Usually we don't actually create textures with drawing very often you can, but most time people are working much more flat. But it's the same thing. You want you, you want the, the shadows to have less detail. You want the shadows to have less texture. So now what I'm doing right now is I'm putting in the core shadow. Uh, and again, the one thing with, with art is they're just not, there's not a, um, a standard. So there's certain things like form shadows where you have like Five different artists will talk about them in five different, slightly different ways. Uh, you know, either if, you know, depending on their their uh, where they were trained and stuff like that. Sometimes you'll hear the the proper Italian use. Sometimes you'll hear, have people use uh, just different terms like the Terminator and 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 other things. The ones that I'm using are usually, hopefully, still the most common. Uh, they certainly were when I was in school. Uh, you know, so. We won't talk about how long ago that was, but you still hear, I still hear them thrown around enough in other videos that I know they're being used. But we're gonna deal with the core shadow, which is where the light and shadow meet. In the lights, we look for light values, half tones, and highlight, or light values, middle values, highlight. Um, some people call the light values the core of the light. Uh, again, there's slightly different terms, but basically you have three values in the lights and three values in the shadows if it's round. If it's not round, well then, you know, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have five different types of form shadows instead of six because round objects have core shadows and flat objects do not. So, we're going to go ahead and put in the reflected light and the shadow. like so and so we've got you now this thing is now starting to look like it has some depth and the reason it has depth is because we have the form shadows we have light values middle values highlight core shadow dark tones reflected light now for the core shadow the core shadow is an edge as where the object will turn and it's right where the light and shadow meets and that's the darkest part. I'm gonna just push this a little bit because I thought it was a little bit light. And again, it will make it feel like it has, you know, volume, it will feel more round. We're gonna do the same thing. And again, we're not gonna sit here and detail this. This will be just a basic, you know, a little still life, you know, basic little concept. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get just enough for it to happen on the cube and the and the uh, and our little <laughs> it almost looks like a little pumpkin, but our little tangerine and we're gonna call it good. Okay, so for for the um, the cube, let's go ahead and that's gonna be a little too neutral. I need some of my orange back. Grab a little bit of that orange because I had some. You know, it had all that gray in my brush, and it was blue gray to boot, and it was going green. So I'm going to compensate that with a little bit of red. Use this neutral red that I had, and that stuff. It's it's really nice because it adds a little bit of red, but just 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 very little. Um, not so much that it overpowers everything. Um, okay. So that's the same value, but it's duller. 
I'm going to bring this in just a little bit more, um, maybe make it just a slight bit richer. I want it duller, but not you know, too dull, so we're, we're going to try to... Okay, so this will be uh, the, the light side of our cube. Um, seemed like it needed just a little bit of red there. And as it comes over, it's going to get slightly darker because of what we were talking about before. Now, I think I think I need to lighten this maybe just a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and come in here and try to transition this a bit more as it goes back to that edge. All right. Now this is starting to feel like it has light all of a sudden. Okay. Again, because now we're getting a little bit more transition gradations, all that good stuff. Okay, and now we're also going to deal with, there's a highlight along the edge. Maybe, I mean, actually I better do the, the what's up here up top first and then put the little highlight on there. Um, and I also need to deal with, um, there's not enough paint right here, so we need to come down here and really make sure that we have paint meeting those two edges. Um, same thing here, we need to make sure that this has enough paint along that edge. Like so. Alright, yeah, that'll work. Um, again, we could get in here, it looked like it got a little bit brighter perhaps. Um, so, the more you blend something, the duller it becomes, the darker it gets. If you can put a mark there, it'll always stay lighter. If you if you don't if you don't uh, you know move it around, it'll stay brighter and lighter. Okay. So again, this is starting to go. Okay, yeah, this starts to feel like that that cube a little bit. Uh, I think we can go just a little bit more orange. I'm gonna get straight orange here. Uh, so I think I can just vary the intensity of this just a bit. So this right here is about the same value, but it's just slightly more intense. And so I just need a little spot, I think, of that where it's just a little more intense. And it makes it feel like it's brighter. It starts to pop off of there, which is what we want. Uh, again, we're going to go ahead and deal with the, the upper side up here. Um, we're going to go ahead and bring in... Now there's some, some of this tangerine, some of the orange of it is going to reflect. Now this is not metal, but it's still going to reflect gently into my into my cube. So we're going to bring some of that in. That was probably a little too much. That's okay. Let's get rid of some of these dirty paper towels. Um, okay, let's go ahead and see if we can... That was too dark. Gently work that in. Okay. Uh, right along this edge is where it's going to get sort of the brightest. So we're going to take a little bit more of this and just put it right there on that corner. Like so. Maybe we can try just a little bit lighter, just a scotch, not too much, just a bit. It can't be lighter than this, so you gotta be careful about that. But now it feels like the lights are coming on on the top of that, top of this cube. Okay. Just a scotch. Just a little bit, so we'll take that out just a little bit. Now I'm going to put on the, the highlight. Now, there's a highlight and then there's a turning edge. Now turning edges will also sometimes catch, not quite like a highlight, but they'll get just a little bit of, it's kind of like 
uh, you know, fall where the colors get brighter just before winter. There's a little bit of where the light will get just a little bit lighter, if, uh, right where it, where it gets darker before it goes around the edge. Now this, this isn't quite a highlight. It's just something that happens with light as it goes around a corner. It'll get a bit lighter. So the highlight up here will actually be a highlight. It'll be lighter than this stuff. Um, so we're going to go ahead and Try that again. Put some of that highlight on there, right? Then we're gonna have this highlight that's gonna help just give this a little bit more punch. Some of you like to use the word, it's gonna give it a little more pop uh, and it's just basically the contrast. We're gonna give us just a little bit more of a feeling of that edge. Okay, so now we've got the highlight there. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to deal with um, let's go ahead and deal a little bit with some of the reflected light deep down in over here. So we have down here, this is very thin paint, so we're going to try to Get rid of that white little ghosty thin, thin uh, bit of paint down there. And let's see if we can do that again. Oops, that's too light. Okay. And then we're gonna we're gonna get a little bit darker as it comes away from there. Now that's just, again, to get a little bit of the gradation in the shadows that are happening. There's a little bit of gradation going on here. Um, that's a little too dark, so we're going to pick up some of a little lighter gray, mix a little lighter gray over that. Still too uh, dark, bring a little bit lighter gray still. So now we're over mixing. We're using lighter values over darker values to get them to, to be light enough. Okay, so now we're going to deal with the cast shadow and this over here. I try to clean this up, get this going. Um, so, start with this edge along here. Um, got a little bit of this, this, this light right there. That's, there we go. Took that out a little bit. Let's go ahead and get our, this and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Cause that's a little too dark. Okay. So again, this is going to be getting a little bit, a little bit darker down here at the bottom. Just a scotch just a little bit okay um, and then it's also got we've got some reflected light down there um, bring some blue in here neutral color leave a little more neutral it needs to get a little lighter so we're going to take a little bit of this lighten this up a bit let's go ahead and tap that in so it because otherwise you'll get like a little roll of too light of paint down there and then you're like oh no that was too much so we'll go ahead and start with this, okay? So this will be, again, where it's getting uh, darker towards the corner. I'm going to continue to bring this edge in because this edge, I think, needs to go just a little bit darker. A little bit of that, 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 a little bit of that. So blue and orange, essentially. Um, as, as all that was. So sometimes you'll see people mix colors like that. I'm like, what are they doing? And I was just trying to neutralize an orange. That's, and I'll do it whatever way I have to. So again, I'm using the grays, I'm using my browns, I'm using my blues. Uh, this again is supposed to be getting uh, darker right along here. OK. 
Okay. Uh, this little corner here is actually the darkest. Except for maybe where the cast shadow. So this gets is darker and it gets lighter as it moves over. And then this gets the darkest. So there's a little bit of cast shadow we haven't worked with yet, but we will. And these are, so we're looking for junctures. Whenever you're looking uh, for, you know, where stuff is happening, like on a cube, it's going to be at these corners. It's going to be at the edges. Look, look at those relationships and start comparing them. And you'll be surprised at what's actually happening versus what we think is actually happening. We usually don't want to in the beginning. When we start painting, we're not paying near much, as much attention. And sometimes when we get really good, we don't pay enough attention because we think we know what's going on. Be very careful of making assumptions. It's just as bad as painting as it is with anything else in life. It's never a good thing. Be very, very careful of it. Um, we have some of the reflected light through here. Okay. I think we've lost too much of the uh, some of the yellow and the brown. So we're going to take a little bit of this. Uh, maybe a little bit more of this so we can start to warm this up. Oh, warm. Well, what's he talking about? Well, we're taking a, a, dull, a dull orange and we're mixing it into this area. So adding orange to a place that I thought was too blue, warming it up. Okay, that's all that means. If I was cooling it down, I'd be adding blue to the orange to make it bluer to cool it down. So again, if I was adding, again, blue to orange, that to cool it down. Or if I was trying, you know, so if I had this, again, I'm, I'm adding orange to warm it up. But if it was, if I needed to, if it was too orange, I could cool it down by adding blue. So warm versus cool, it's something we talk a lot about as we paint. And sometimes in the beginning to uh, people, it can be, and it was to me when I first started hearing it, because I wasn't used to people talking about color that way. So again, we can, I'm adding blue a little bit to this area because I want it cooler. And I want it warmer here and then cooler as it comes down to the reflected light. I want it lighter. So it's changing value. It's changing temperature. It's changing in a myriad of ways. Not a wonderful word, myriad. But it's changing in all kinds of ways. And we, we need it to. We want it to. It, it will it'll make, it'll give our painting more depth. It'll make it more interesting. And people will look at your stuff and go, wow, how did you do that? And, of course, it's up to you to respond however you like but uh, if you really want to you can say well I took some classes from this guy that knew what he was doing you know that's that that's that's the preferred response but again you can tell him just how the if you like how the faints the fates smiled on your bassinet as a child and that's why you're just that good um, or you can just tell them, well yeah there's this guy you know I know a guy give them that line see if they believe you but this is where it's fun, where we start to learn and start to, to play, and, and, and that's where the fun starts to happen on, on the painting. So again, we've got, that, we've got that worked in. We've got our cube looking like it has some depth, which is what we want. And the last part, but not least, we're going to deal with the orange. Now, if I had more time, again, I'd clean these up by bringing more paint. So a lot of times people are like, why does it take people so long? Why did that paint take so long? People will hear, oh, it took me like six hours to paint this or 10 hours to paint that. And they're like, man, what were you doing? Because you'll get like an hour and a half in. You're like, man, what are those other people doing? Here I am. Well, they're going to try to get it to the next level. In other words, they're going to clean up edges. They're going to make sure that every edge is not only the right color, but is, is clear and consistent and and doing exactly what you want, and that takes the time. So this would still be, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, would still be in the beginning stages. This is not, you know, a, a finished painting. It's not something that's going to go into any shows that I'm doing or anything like that. It's just, it's just not to that level. But I could take it and go, all right, well, let's make this the most wonderful little painting of a, you know, of this little tangerine sitting on a on a cube and then I might would take another five six hours and really really get this to work get this to do what I wanted and that's you know that's where you're really gonna so again and a lot of it's just the nuancing oh you know I'm gonna go ahead and redo this edge and I'm gonna redo that edge and and that's fine that's what you want to do get it to that really nice stage of completion 
that's where the time really happens. That's that's where you know we burn most of the time when we're creating paintings is at that point where we're trying to get stuff to do what we want instead of just hoping that it does what we want. The hoping part doesn't, <laughs> you know, doesn't do much. Uh, it's it's where the, you know sort of the rubber meets the road. You get in there, you, you do the heavy lifting, and that's that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to do the the heavy lifting, if you will. Um, again, I'm trying to get some of the reflected color and reflected light down here into the into the cast shadow. Uh, the cast shadow then goes around the corner. It gets slightly cooler, so we're gonna add a little bit of blue to this, and it gets slightly lighter as it's going around the corner, so we can lighten that a little bit. Um, so again, we get all these little nuances with the form shadows that really is what's going to make this or, or break it as the old saying might go. Uh, we're going to get a little darker just under that object which is called uh, the uh, occlusion shadows and again same thing would be here we'd have these little shadows where, the, where everything touches you're going to have what's called an occlusion shadow it means two surfaces are touching and it gets really dark in an occlusion shadow so we go okay yeah there's right here where that touches the cloth that would be an occlusion shadow, you know, where this uh, where this little guy touches again the cloth, there's going to be again an occlusion shadow, where this little guy, you know, again where this guy touches the cloth along here, there's again going to be another occlusion shadow. So we could go ahead and get this. Right along there, and again, it's going to have those little, those little little details are going to give it, you know, just more depth. Um, again, if I wanted to push this, I keep looking up there, and I keep going, hmm. Seems like there's just a little bit more, you know, the, the in the reflected light area, so I could bring just a little bit more in of reflected light. Now that actually changed more of the color than the value, so let's see if we can pull just a little bit more value into there. That seems like that's kind of go in the direction just a little bit. So it's just these little nuances. We're constantly looking uh, at the object, taking our eyes out of focus, asking ourselves, what is what is really happening up there? What's that's really gonna be changing? Like there's a little bit of cool light right along here where this hits this side. So it's getting it's getting lighter as it is as it's as it's going around that corner. Uh, and all that good stuff. There's a little bit of this going here again, and that's you know. So we're we're doing that. So we're, we're bringing some of the warmth back in there. Now we're actually gonna deal with. Um, I mean, we could, again we could play with these two edges right here where they touch. Again, I'm using this nice brush as a really nice edge to do that. Uh, again, you can put your put my finger down to support it. That's the wrong value. Wow, look at that. That was a bad decision. Well, we'll just come over here with a lighter value. And then pull the two together. And now that's, you know, pretty close to what we want. Again, we say, well, what about this over here? Again, where that edge is just a little kind of, you know, just a little, it's not very straight. Take that off a little bit, change that up. So again, this is where we're maybe careful. Some people call this tickling edges. Now this is, you know, finite stuff, but it's you know it is stuff that we're going to have to deal with at some point. Um, let's go ahead and get into the to the orange. Now the orange, if you start adding white to stuff, stuff starts going duller and a little pastier. So we're going to start off by trying to get the sort of the brighter bits um, in here. And so we're going to lighten that. If you lighten it with yellow, it will stay. Now it's going to go yellower, don't get me wrong, but it will stay brighter. The moment I start adding white to this, it'll start to lose intensity very quickly. So as we're dealing with this, understand that the moment, and I'll show you here just right now, 
let's say we go, okay, it's lighter. I'm going to add immediately white to this. The moment I do, and people will be like, well, I can't, I can't get the exact, uh, the exact um, color. What's what's happening? If you add white to it, it's always going to go, you know, again, slightly peachy. And if it gets too light, too peachy, it won't look right. So white's always the last thing. If you're like, well, it still needs to be lighter, well, then add white. But don't let white be the first thing you add because it's always the wrong thing to do uh, to do that first. Usually try to go, hey, and you might say, wait a minute, I thought you said when we mix stuff, we, we change the value and stuff like that. And we do. I'm changing the value right now, but I'm changing the value with yellow. I'm not changing the value with white. So again, it will, if, whenever you change a value and you're changing that value with a color, like yellow will lighten this. Now it also will make it more yellow. Don't think for a minute that I'm, I'm, not, I'm telling you that it's not doing that because that absolutely is going to happen. Of course it would. You know, it's, we're adding yellow to it. But the idea is what we normally will do when we first start painting is we'll go, oh, I need to darken it, and, or pardon me, lighten it, and we immediately, you know, we'll, we'll reach over for the white, and then we go, wow, that just doesn't, that's, that's just not, what, it just not, isn't what I want. It doesn't look right. And that's because re whenever you add white, you start sacrificing a lot of chroma very quickly. And on something like this orange, we have to, we have to preserve. We have to preserve the intensity, preserve the chroma. We need it to be bright. And if we start adding white to it, it will start to dull very, very, very quickly. So like right now, I'm trying to get that middle value. And I don't want to go, I want it, I, I'm trying to keep it brighter and yet uh, reds a little reds are slightly darker right so to make this darker and still keep it brighter I'm making it slightly redder okay so this is redder this is more yellow and that's what's going to keep this thing looking brighter as we as we paint it um, I'm gonna grab a little bit of brown now this will darken this still uh, but we need to dark. We need to darken it. So we have. We're gonna. Whenever you darken something, you're gonna sacrifice a little bit of of intensity. And I and I, I I did. But I have to. There's a point at which you're like, I have to do A, B, or C, or D. Well, that's fine. You know, as we go darker, we are gonna sacrifice intensity. Now you could say, well, I can darken a little bit with red, and 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 sacrifice less intensity, and you can. But if it goes too red, well, then it's going to look like an apple. So you know what I mean? There's, you can only do that to a certain point where you have to then start adding the brown and stuff like that. So don't, that, that'll help you keep colors a little brighter as they're changing. And that's what we want. We want, we just, usually we just want, need a little bit more punch to our color as we're using it. Okay. Like so. This is then getting a little bit darker around the corner here. And like so. This is also getting darker as it goes up. And so we want some of that. We want a little bit more of that than I think I've got. So we're going to go ahead and add just a little bit more. Now that went too dark, so I'm going to grab a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, so orange, a more brighter orange. Now is it going to bring it all the way back? No, that's not what I'm looking for. I need it to be darker, so that's fine, but it just went too dull. So I added a little bit of pure red to the mixture, a little bit of pure yellow, and now we're trying to get this back to where we need it to be. Okay, so now the other thing that's going to make this, give it a little bit more intensity or make it look brighter so there's not so it's gonna make it seem more intense is we're gonna use a duller color and we're gonna go into the shadows and we're gonna darken it because the shadows right now are too light so we're gonna come in here and we're darkened for the shadows and the darker shadows are gonna give the lights a feeling of a higher intensity okay We also have reflected light happening at the bottom of this, so we have to be careful as we're doing this.
All right. And so this is going to go over here. And again, there's going to be reflected light. So it gets darker and then it gets lighter again because of reflected light. Um, also going to start to get darker through here. And again, we're using that redder mixture that's going to be a little brighter. Okay. All right. Now you're probably saying, I'm looking for this thing to look brighter. I don't know that you've done it yet, Kevin. And I think you're right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and darken for our shadows. And we're going to go ahead and go, okay, and now we need the core shadow. Now the core shadow is the darkest part and it's where the light and shadow meet. Okay. So, and again, we've, we've got some of the lights that's blowing some of this out. So we're going to try to deepen it. We're going to make it a little bit darker than what we see it. Because if we have a very distinct core shadow, it again will feel more round. And so we're going to go ahead and again put a little bit more value on there. Put a little bit more value on here. And so the shadow side is going to look darker. Now we're going to go ahead and do a little bit more. Now I think I told you, hey, be careful of the white. Well, this is this red is so intense. We're going to start by lightening my red a little bit, and then we're going to add a little bit of our yellow to it because there are parts of this that get very yellow orange. Not everywhere, but there are a couple places where again we've got yellow orange happening, and we want to make sure that we want to give that a nod. Okay. So this is, again, yellow-orange. We're going to bring this over here, right? And we're going to go ahead and bring some of this yellow-orange in here, okay? Okay. Make this a little darker. We're going to add a little bit of the brown to it. It's going to go a little darker. This goes a little darker up here, like so. We're then going to bring back in some of this nicer, this is our red orange right through there. Make that seem like that's a little brighter. We're going to go ahead and soften some of the, the values through here. Uh, we're going to look for some reflected light in the shadows, and there's some very uh, that's some reflected light down here in the shadows. Now I think that's too red, so we're going to bring some more of the yellow and bring some of that in there. Just a just a nod to that. Now that's a little too bright, so what we're going to do is we're going to stroke that a couple times, bring that back down. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now again, it's also so some of the surrounding colors. So again, where this gets a little darker as it comes around, this gets darker, and again, one edge gets lighter. So as this edge goes, and it's a soft transition, but as this edge goes darker, this edge over here gets lighter. So again, we're going to try to make sure we have enough light up there. And again, we're going to go ahead and continue to look up there. We take our eyes out of focus to see what we can see, to see what the values are. To see what we can see doesn't tell us that much, but we're looking for the basic value relationships on this guy. 
as we're you know pulling these values around uh, again we're so we, we look over here there's again some some of these yellow oranges that we need to have in here we then have some of the the red oranges as they go up getting slightly darker so again now we get some of the redder oranges as they come over here um, we have this getting slightly darker coming around this edge and as it goes up over here it starts to catch a little bit of light going up on this part of the edge so there's just these little nuances that are going to help you know, going to help us to to get this to work this is uh should have done that last i shouldn't have done that Let's see if i can grab a, another one of these grab this grab a little bit of red okay again we now we have this beautiful orange color again we're going to bring this in a little bit okay uh, we then have some of our middle values right through here bring in these middle values here we then have a dark middle value so that's again so middle values have a light and dark side so we're going to bring some of those in here like that we have some dark middle values down here as well all right so we're back again uh, again we're finishing up this little uh, the little painting here with the tangerine I just decided I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of this and a little bit of the yellow I'm going to go ahead and so I was going to mix up a little bit of uh, green. This is just for the little, you know, where it came off the, the stem to the tree. And I was just going to put that in there. <laughs> so then we can do this other stuff around it. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and now I've pre-mixed some oranges, just again, they're convenience colors. I have them shifting from redder to true orange to yellow orange. And again, we're just going to use these to get to finish the painting out essentially. Um, so all right now one thing about again you know, when we're doing these guys now we're using a limited palette so because we're using a limited palette we're gonna have to we're gonna match the values we're not gonna try to match exact uh, the exact intensity sometimes even the hue we're gonna focus instead on the value now with this limited palette we can get pretty good oranges uh, so again oranges usually are not that big a deal if we're trying to get certain types of reds especially roses and things like that that can be a big deal because you can't there's just certain there's a whole range of colors we just cannot mix with this limited palette but for you know realistic painting and all that sort of stuff we can mix enough that people will perceive it to be uh, the color it's supposed to be without having to match the color and that may seem like a bunch of double talk but it's not our, our minds are pretty poor at being able to remember color we're not we you know we don't have photographic color memories and so as long as I have an orange it's the proper or in this case a tangerine that's the proper value and the proper value shifts then my brain will go yeah that's that's a tangerine in context it looks fine uh, now there may be certain people out there with some sort of you know but for the most most people most artists most people period 
cannot tell. And so that's how, you know, people would do paintings. I would talk about how we have more color now than they did 200 years ago, but you can find paintings with strawberries that seem like the strawberries are jumping off the canvas. And people are like, well, wait a minute, how did they do that? Well, first off, if you carried a strawberry in there and then put it up to the painting, you'd say, well, wait a minute, this isn't exactly the same color. I just perceived it to be the same color. And so, you know, a lot of that is just what we believe we are seeing and, and, not, ex and not precisely what we are seeing, but what we think we are seeing. And that's that illusion part of this. So remember, we're, you know, we're creating illusions. We're trying to make people believe that this two-dimensional space has depth, it has volume, it has form, and substance, and all that good stuff, when in fact, it doesn't. And we're trying to fool people into thinking it does. And that's, again, that's part of the illusion. We are illusionists. We are magicians. We are getting people to believe something that does not actually exist, which is the fun part. Uh, all I'm doing now is I'm bumping the values a little bit. I'm trying to reestablish all the different values on here, uh, trying to make sure that we have some nice transitions where it's, you know, the, the, the form is, uh, the, the shadows are going around a form uh, in, a, in a subtle way. And I'm trying to, again, just softenly try to get some, some gradations in here. That's gonna be the name of the game. Whether I can get, you know, if I can get people to believe that these are in fact going darker and stuff like that. I mean, they are, they should be, don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying we want to push, we're going to push that illusion. And so it's, it's, a, it's a visual sleight of hand. And that's the fun part, is, is it is a visual sleight of hand. It's something that does not exist. And that's, that's the great thing about art, is we're getting people to believe in something that isn't real. Or that could be real. But by not real, I mean that this is not that that these types of fruit does not exist. That's not what I mean by what's not real. I mean that this is literally a two-dimensional surface. And we're trying to get people to believe that instead of it being two-dimensional, that is in fact three-dimensional. And that's what the illusion that we're talking about. It in fact is not three-dimensional. It is always, you know, it is always a two-dimensional surface. And yet we're trying to make people believe it's something that it's absolutely not. And again, that's that's the great part of this. That's that's the fun part of this. That's that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it exciting. That's what makes art so much so gratifying to those who to work in the medium, who work in the medium, is that again you are creating these illusions, these ideas of things that people are believing, even though we know that it, it does not. It's not what we are, are it's, it's not what we're seeing because we, we can see that it's a two-dimensional surface and yet it seems like a window an opening to another realm another dimension where things like this do exist that seem to defy their you know their surroundings to defy the fact that this actually is two-dimensional and not three-dimensional and so We've get, we're getting here to the point where we're just, we've got just enough of an illusion to create. We have, dark, we have core shadow dark tones, we have reflected light, we have middle values, we have light values, we, we even have some dark middle values in a couple places. I think we need a little bit more, maybe back here, just as it goes over the hill and into that little, that little dip. We're going to go ahead and have some, some red as it comes over right there. We're then going to have it get a little bit lighter. Maybe that's too quickly, so we're going to go ahead and bring that back down. Okay, there we go. All right, and now we're going to place a highlight. <clears throat> and for this one, Especially since this is the focal point, is really, it's all everything here was to 
make this uh, make this tangerine look good. That's that's what that's what we're here about is the is the tangerine. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, I wanted to see if that that so those those palette knife marks are as clean a paint as I could possibly put down. I wanted to see if I could get just a little bit more out of it. And I got a little bit, but not, not a whole lot. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and place the highlight. Um, now highlight shift is they, is they, um, they, they, tr the, the color shifts. So, and we should, we're always looking for shifting color. The color shifts as it goes from light to shadow. The shadows will shift a hue slightly. And the same thing happens when we go to highlight. The highlights are not white. They have a color. And they try to shift to the complementary color, but they don't quite get there. So the highlights I'm seeing on this are actually a light red violet color. Again, as these are trying to shift to the complementary side of this um, of this orange, but they don't quite make it. <clears throat> now I got that a little bit too light, so we're going to come in with a little bit more paint, a little too light right here, and we're going to go ahead and tint that back down, ever so ever so gently, ever so lightly, like so. We're going to tint this down a little bit. Like so. Tint this down a little bit more. Like so. And now we have, again, we have a, a painting of this, um, of this tangerine. Let me just see if I can put one more stroke down. Yeah, that'll work. That really glows. Okay, and it's actually, it actually has to be dark enough that it doesn't go too light. Um, so this is a dark middle value that I'm putting down. But in context of all that shadow, it looks pretty bright. So this is what we're, this is what we're about. We're trying to you know, get these ideas, get these values in a relationship where again, they, they start to imply, start to infer uh, the, different, the different values that we have. All right. I'm going to try to shift that just a little darker, a little redder right next to that, so that will go in a bit. And I think we're done. All right, so here we go. Cute little still life in oil paint. Um, yes, we could still play with this. You know, I'd want to play with this area. I'd want to clean these up. Again, I could spend another five hours on this, really getting this to shine. But we've got the basics. We have everything here has, so we have cast shadow, light values, middle values, dark values, reflected light. Um, we have cast shadow, cast shadow, cast shadow. We have light values, middle values, highlight, coarse shadow, dark tones, reflected light. We have highlight, light values, middle values. We have coarse shadow, coarse shadow, dark tone, reflected light. So again, we've got all the stuff that we need for this to have some depth. And, and we actually do have, um, that's too bright. Let me go ahead and try this again. This reflected light is over here on the lit side, so it should be a little lighter than this over here. And so I'm trying to see if I can bump it just a bit. Can't bump it too much, but just a bit. And see if we can just soften this a little bit. Like so, there we go. So again, we have Highlight, light values, middle values, coarse shadow, dark tones, reflected light, and we've got this thing looking like tangerine. Now I'm going to do one more thing 
because I think this has gotten a little flat in the back. And so let's see if we can bring just a little bit of light right there. There we go. I think that really works. Okay, just sometimes it's just a little bit that are like, oh yeah, because if we've got the light hitting this side, which we do on this, it'll also be hitting this side a little bit as well. So that's what that was about. And I just took off a little bit of the texture. All right, so this has been Kevin McCain with Kevin McCain Studios and Idaho Art Classes. For those of you, this is the, again, I believe I said that in the beginning, this was the seventh session. This is actually the eighth session, pardon me. So um, this is the last class. Again, we're doing this cute little painting of a neutral object, a medium, so a low intensity object, uh, medium intensity, high intensity. This is low intensity, low intensity. So we've got all these different variations in here, a little vignette or a small little still life. Um, if you're not part of my class, we'll go ahead and, and again, try to do this at home. It's a really great exercise for working with oil paint. Um, and yeah, you guys have yourselves a great day. Be more creative. Bye-bye now. Take care.